Well, hey there, American Farmstead Hers. This is Jenny with the Grandstead Family Farm. And Donna with Hazel Bell Farm. And we are coming to y'all from Northeast Florida as two American Farmstead Hers doing our best to grow our own food and share our homesteading experiences with you in hopes that you would grow a little food of your own. Yep. And this week we are here to talk about how anybody can do it. Yes, this homesteading life can be for anyone, as long as you have that desire in your heart. Yeah, yeah. We always say homesteading is a mindset. It totally is a mindset. It's way more than a massive garden and a cow. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, those are not, th- that is not a requirement to no. consider yourself a homesteader. No, no, that's what we've evolved into. And so that's what we yeah. often find ourselves talking about when we do our catch-up episodes and all of that. So, um, but we didn't start there. Nope, nope. sure didn't. Mm-mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's talk about um, what are some of the things that everyone can do? Well, if you want to go back to the beginning, I always like to think of starting small and thinking big. Mm -hmm. Like maybe you have that big dream of one day having the big garden and the dairy cow, Mm -hmm. but you can't just jump into that. You have to start small. Right. Um, So with homesteading, when you think about starting small, it's often maybe like taking what you have and making something out of it, taking something and making more out of it. Yeah. I do tell people, I I get a lot of questions. I frequently get people who ask about keeping a cow. Yeah. And um, because it's kind of become my thing. And so I I often find myself telling people, well, you know, what are you going to do with the milk? Are you just going to drink the milk? Because you're going to get a lot of milk. Right. You know, in fact, I had somebody ask, um, she just jumped into keeping, I mean, and they're many, they're many jerseys, but they're producers, man. And it's just her family. Right. And they, she's like, uh, what do I do with all the milk? (laughs) I know. What do I do? Because <laughs> she's now she has three mini cows and milk. That's a lot. It's a lot of milk coming in. So, um, yeah, I gave her some ideas, and uh, she's like, "Okay, I'm ready to sell it." <laughs> so yeah, so maybe like before you jump into that whole dairy cow thing, maybe learn that skill. Like right. you don't have to have a dairy cow in order to learn how to make cheese, right. how to make yogurt, how to make butter. Yeah, like you could go to what's the the local fair place. Yeah. They sell whole raw milk, but from my understanding, it doesn't even need to be raw milk. Well, it depends. Um, like it depends I, on what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. We, I think yogurt was probably the first thing that I learned how to make yeah. with, with dairy. And one thing that a wise woman who's not on a homestead per se, um, but one thing she said was, I'll tell you how to make yogurt, but don't go buy on raw milk. Like that costs too much. You're going to end up pasteurizing it anyways. And I was right. Like, oh, oh. Yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, you can, you can do that with any kind of milk. Some cheeses are going to need to be at least low heat pasteurized, so, but you can seek that out at your grocery store. There's no reason right. to have the cow all the time, you know, for every situation. Right. So, so that might be a good starting point. You know, if one yeah. day that big dream is that dairy cow, mm. maybe start small mm-hmm. with learning what to do with all that milk. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good idea. Um, And really, if we're talking about the kitchen, like you could go on and on about all the ways to start small in the kitchen, you mm -hmm, know, mm -hmm. if you want to be a homesteader. Well, we always say like everything that our farms do center around food and the food has to get processed, it has to get preserved and it has to be prepared. All of that is in the kitchen. That's what I also always tell people start in the kitchen. That's why. Yeah, right. Because pretty much everybody has a kitchen. Yeah. You know. <laughs> and a need to use it. Yeah. So learning to cook from scratch is is kind of what I always say to start. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Or, you know, simply learning how to start to put up some food. Like mm-hmm. the first time I ever wanted to learn how to make jam, I wasn't growing blueberries. Right. I'm still not growing blueberries. Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I do have some blueberry plants and I did get like little handfuls yeah. of blueberries, but not near enough to like make jam with. Right. And, um, I mean, this was probably about 10 years ago. I wanted to learn how to make jam. So I went to Walmart and I bought frozen blueberries to make jam with. And you know what? I made jam. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, it's learning a good skill Mm -hmm. while you're waiting. 
our first jam experiment. Uh, this is actually kind of funny. I have t- I have two stories. One is I told last week where we came from, right? We mm-hmm. we did that discussion, and so when my family first moved from suburbia to rural life, one of the things my mom wanted to do was go forage for blackberries to make jam. And you know, blackberries grow like wild around here. Yeah. So that's what we did. We did, it was family day, and we went you know, traipsing through the woods, finding blackberries and worried about bears and worried about wild hogs. And of course, this is like the memory from a child. Right. (laughs) It probably wasn't that uh, Probably wasn't that dangerous. Yeah, not that dramatic. But um, we did. We picked a bunch of blackberries and um, I think we ended up, something happened with her jam. But, you know, again, we were learning. She was learning and we ended up with more like a syrup. We used it like pancake syrup. Um, as an, a young adult with a young family, I, wa- I returned to that. I want to make jam. Mm-hmm. And so we went out blackberry foraging through our hunting woods and brought back a bunch of blackberries, but it wasn't enough to make jam. I think we were late in the season, right? early or late, something like that. And, you know, we were out there long enough to make family memories of <laughs> sweating and thorny and, you know, all of that fun stuff, but, um, didn't have enough. So we went to the grocery store and bought blackberries. And I remember like comparing, I think we took a picture of (laughs) those that we foraged really (laughs) tiny. Right. (laughs) And those that we purchased, you know, because they're all hybrid varieties and grown on big farms or whatever. On steroids. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So, um, yeah. And we made blackberry jam for the first time and that led into, oh, what else can I do? And um, we wanted strawberry jam. And then we took a vacation somewhere to the mountains where there's like an Amish community mm-hmm. and went shopping through their little store. And it just had my wheels just a turn in in my head, you know. Oh, oh, we can like combine berries to make right. <laughs> to make another flavor jam. And so that really that really was our start. I don't think we've purchased a jam or a jelly since then. Right. So and that's been oh my gosh. 15 years. Right. So, yeah. Pretty cool. So yeah, anybody start can anywhere. do that. Yeah. And, and now, last year, we grew enough strawberries to make our own jam that we didn't purchase strawberries. Nice. However, I've killed a lot of my strawberry plants. I know. I killed so many strawberries. Oh. I just, I'm so bad in the summer. I just yeah. don't want to go into the garden when it's 105 degrees. Yeah. And they just didn't get watered. Yeah. Mine, mine just fried. A lot they of them fried. did. I, I have some, but most of them fried. So I, I have to buy strawberries this year. Yeah. But I'm learning. I know. I'm learning. I think still, this year. We're still I know, learning. We're always learning. We're still failing. We're still learning. Yeah. <laughs> failing forward. <laughs> this year, I think I'll put shade cloth over them. Yeah. That's a great idea. Mm-hmm. And maybe mulch them better. Yeah. With some straw. Mm-hmm. And then maybe water them, you know. Every now and then. All living things <laughs> need water. <laughs> Yeah, so you know, making making stuff that you didn't grow or preserving stuff that you didn't like. Heck, I also just bought a whole box of cucumbers over the weekend to make pickles because Did I have you? yeah, because I have these sweet girls coming over eating up all my pickles. Like I catch them carrying jars out of the house on right. their way home. You know? <laughs> and you're like, hey, and I'm like, guys, you know, there's pickles at the store, and they said, but they're not as good as yours. Uh-huh. <laughs> so it's sweet. So I'm like, all right, all right, I'll make more. Pickles. I'll buy pick. I'll buy cucumbers so you can have pickles. Right, yeah. right. So I mean, you don't necessarily have to grow it all. To preserve it. Exactly. Um, And that's like same thing with like rendering lard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, I mean, if you can learn to render lard and Mm -hmm. have jars of healthy fat in your refrigerator, you know, waiting to use, that is an excellent skill to learn. Yeah. And you can ask a butcher for extra fat. Absolutely. Oftentimes they'll give it to you. Yeah. You don't have to buy it. Yeah. I mean, I've seen it in the... um, uh, in the Nettles Country Store, mm-hmm. they package up fat for people to buy, and it's super, super, super cheap. But it's yeah. that good cut of clean fat that you want for rendering lard. Mm-hmm. And rendering lard is so simple. It is. It is so simple. I mean, like literally, you can do it in a crock pot, mm-hmm. and that's all you need. That's all you need. You need crock pot and lard, mm-hmm. a knife. Yeah, that's it. Cut yeah. it up. Yeah. If you don't know, like. Uh, also tallow, beef, beef, beef fat, tallow, yeah. you can render down to tallow and do it the same way. You just cut it in small pieces 
and cut any bits of meat off, yep. any connective tissue out. So it's just the fat. Right. Load up your crock pot. I put a little water in the bottom I put of mine. A, yeah, I start with like a quarter cup of water. Right. Yeah. And um, put that fat in there low and slow is the name of the game on that one. And mm-hmm. just, just let it go and go and go and go. I have learned to uh, run it through a meat grinder instead okay. of spending the time cutting it. Okay. Um, it's a little tricky, though, because it's so, yeah. like, squishy. It is a little bit faster, mm-hmm. but then you have to clean your meat grinder. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's had lard <laughs> gone through it. That is true. Which takes, like, a half a day. I also <laughs> like to do um, a submersion blender. Okay. That works That's really well. That's a good well. idea. Yeah. A little once, easier to clean than I mean, the meat grinder. Yeah. Once it starts to cook down and soften a little bit, you can okay. you need to take it to it. And, okay. Let it go, yeah, and just and let it go, and then you just strain it, filter it right. out into jars, let it cool. That's it. Yeah, I ladle mine off mm-hmm. as it's melting. I ladle it off, okay. and fill like a jar at a time. That way, none of it's getting too hot and getting scorched. Okay, um, but I mean, as long as you have your crock pot on low and your crock pot actually does a nice low temperature, yeah, you shouldn't really be scorching anything. But. I ladle mine off like a jar at a time Mm -hmm. and cap it and cool it and it's done. Yeah, that's a good one. What about um, bone broth? How do you do bone broth? That's another thing that I see people buying all the time. And every time I see it, I'm like, you can make that. It's you can so make cheap. it. And homemade bone broth is so amazing. Mm. I'm actually out right now and I what? need to make some. I know. I know. Do you have bones? <gasps> yeah, I do. Okay. I do. I, I want to save a few more chicken carcasses before I get into it because I like to make a nice big batch. Mm-hmm. But you don't have to make a giant batch of bone broth. Like mm-hmm. I, for years, I was doing it um, again in my crock pot. Yeah, you know, I mean, you just put as many bones as you can fit into your crock pot. <laughs> um, you don't have to do the same type of bone if right. you want. You can mix your bones if that's what you have. That's perfectly fine. Mm-hmm. Um, some people do like you know chicken broth or a beef broth, but mm-hmm. Regardless, fill your crock pot up completely to the top with as many bones as you can get in there. The more bones you put in, the more gelatinous Mm -hmm. your bone broth will be. And um, top that off with water and a little bit of apple cider vinegar. It's really all you need. That's like the basic. That's the basic. That's the basic. If you want, you can add any type of greenery that you have from the garden, any yeah. type of herbs. It, it doesn't mm-hmm. really matter. You can put any type of vegetable in there or any green in there. It doesn't matter. I think every time I make it, it's different. Every time it's different. Yeah. Yeah. When I do a big batch, like after processing chickens, um, or like I'll do a big batch because, you know, we got beef in from the processor. I've got a bunch of beef bones and I'll do those in like a big countertop roaster oven. Yeah. So if you roast those bones Mm, first. Yeah. mm. The roasted bones are really good. (laughs) If you, yeah. Yeah. If you roast them with like some olive oil in the oven. Good stuff. It gives it a nice flavor. Yeah. So I'll do like the basic for that. Yeah. Um, when I cook a whole chicken, I save that whole carcass. I stick that, I use the instant pot for that because it does it in like two hours. Okay. Um, and I also keep a running bag in my freezer, in my kitchen freezer. Yeah. A gallon size Ziploc bag of vegetable scraps. Mm -hmm. And so it has carrot peels and tops. Right. It has onion onion peels. It has garlic peels. It has, um, you know, whatever odds and ends kind of stuff. Um, vegetable, veggie things, um, maybe stems from a sprig of rosemary you right. know, that I use right. for something else. And I just throw it all in there. When that bag is full or even if it's not full, like if I have a carcass to do, I just empty all of that in with the carcass and cover it over a little vinegar, turn it on, let it go. And then since that's only going to make me like a gallon, right. you know, I don't try to process that to for shelf no. stability at all. I just, you know, pour it in jars Save it in the refrigerator. Use it throughout the week. Yeah, um, it it makes a very quick like breakfast for me when I, before I go out and do chores in the morning. I love yeah. that. I love that. That probably keeps you nice and warm. It's, right now, yeah, yeah, it's nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice. Yeah. So, so again, yeah, broth like, like bone broth. Like yeah. it, it's taking something that you already have mm-hmm. and making something out of it. Right. Basic things. No like, acreage required. No <laughs> acreage required. Here's one that you may not even think is homestead related at all, but like learning how to use fats in cooking or learning like when to season a dish with your fats and then learning how to make a roux, mm-hmm. learning how raw milk behaves 
when you cook with it. Right. You know, that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. Play around. Cook through a cookbook to learn those skills or take a cooking class. You know, there's all kinds of master classes online. Yeah. Some are free even. Right. And uh, to learn those skills. Because if you want a homestead one day... You're going to have to learn your way around the kitchen. <laughs> That's right. Because, right. I mean, you know, essentially if you're growing and raising all that food, you got to know what to do with it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, I have a quick cheese recipe I can share. Oh, yeah. Do Please that? do. Yeah. Okay. So um, this is actually from the Prairie Homestead, and then I double it. Um, okay. But this is super easy. Jill Winger, Prairie Homestead, love her stuff. She puts this recipe out there, too. Um, but it's in her cookbook. But the double is use a gallon of milk, heat okay. it, uh, or a gallon of milk and half a cup of lemon juice. So who doesn't have lemon juice? Right. Right. And I think this works with your regular pasteurized milk, too. Okay. Um, it's a whole milk ricotta is what it is. Okay. Heat the milk to, it. she says 190. I think I find like just under 190. Um, now, is your pan important here? I use a heavy bottom stainless steel pot. Right. So you're not going to want to scorch the milk. That's right. the trick. Right. That's the okay. trick. Yeah. And you don't want to go over 190. This is one of those things like when, you know, your grandma taught you to make some kind of pastry and you ask her, how long do I need it for? She's like, I don't know. Feel it. Right. <laughs> this is like that kind of experience. So um, so do you heat it with like a long thermometer in there? I do. Okay. Yeah. And I just let it yeah. sit. But I, like I said, it's usually just under 190. Okay. You're watching for the behavior of the milk. So it's going to start steaming. You don't want it to boil. If you go to boiling, it's too much. But it'll just start to get like foamy, bubbly on the top. Okay. Turn the heat off. Okay. Let it sit for like five or ten minutes. And you'll start to see these like pillowy, cloudy uh, clumps Okay. float to the top. Um, at that point, you can either scoop them out into their own bowl or just pour the whole thing through like a cloth line strainer, which is okay. what I usually do. Um, it's not super finicky or fragile or anything like that. So I just dump it out and then put the solids that you've strained out back into a bowl or a pot, a teaspoon of salt, mix it up real well, chill it, and you have a whole milk ricotta. And it's easy. It tastes so good. We've started seasoning it with... Um, like a ranch mix. We call it our ranch yeah. ricotta. Yeah, it's, it's really good. very popular here. So It's really good. I mean, I know I risk like putting it out, but I don't care. Like you can do it. I want right, people whatever. to know you can do yeah. it. Yeah. Um, we've done like a French onion flavor. Ooh. That's really good. You could probably do all kinds of different yeah. flavors with that. Yeah. Montreal steak seasoning. Yeah. It's good stuff. Good tomato basil. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. Makes a good spread. Or you can use it in a dish. Like we'll use it in a baked spaghetti or a lasagna or whatever your ricotta. Right. Is your recipe calls for ricotta. So hmm. it's good. Yeah, that sounds really good. Anyone, I'm going to have to try that. Anyone can do it. Anybody. Milk, lemon juice, salt. That's all you need. Nice. <laughs> do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's see here. What about actually growing your food? Yeah. Yeah. I mean. I start somewhere. Start somewhere. Start small. If you don't have any outdoor space, what about microgreens? Mm, yeah. We talked to our friend Charlene yeah. a few months ago. She came on the podcast. You can go back and listen to that. But she's got a lot of good tips about microgreens. I'm seeing now the popularity of growing them yourself because there's like a whole microgreen setup at our local hardware store now. Oh, really? Well, not not like a setup, but like in their seed display. Okay. They have a whole shelf of microgreens, bulk seeds. Interesting. I was impressed. Yeah. And this is right down the road. Right down the road. Yeah. Yeah. In our little town. That is so cool. Yeah. We're going to have to go seed shopping soon. Yeah. <laughs> I'm ready for it. <laughs> I'm ready for it. Yeah, so microgreens is a good a good I mean you can do that in an apartment. Exactly, with you know, in a tray mm -hmm. on your kitchen counter. Mm -hmm. Like those trays are literally like what? Maybe they're 12 like, by 24. I don't know. They call them 10 by 20s. 10, is, 20 is trays. That, does that mean 10 inch by 20 inch? I have no idea why they call it a 10, 20 tray. I mean, I'm a pretty successful gardener, <laughs> but I don't have any idea why it's called that. I have no idea. Anyway. Yeah. It's a 10 by 20 tray. Yeah. And you can, you can grow a bunch. 
Yeah, so super simple. And microgreens last forever, too. Mm-hmm. In so the like, fridge, yeah. Yeah, they really do. Like, I mean, I had Charlene gave me some microgreens when we did our market that one mm-hmm. day. And I stuck them in the fridge, and honestly, I forgot about them yeah. for like two weeks. And yeah. then finally, I was like, oh, my gosh, there's all these micro... We, yeah. Everybody, we need to eat these. And we ate on them for like two more weeks, and they totally stayed good the whole time. Yeah. I was super impressed how long they lasted. It's a nice, crunchy, fresh thing to yes, have. Yes, yeah. it was so good. Mm-hmm. I actually have a bag of microgreen seeds that's been sitting in my laundry room for a minute. Really? Mm-hmm. Interesting. Mm-hmm. It's some type of pea, I think. Mm. Oh, those were my favorite. Those were so good. They're sweet. It's, they are. It's a, like a sweet lettuce to put on your wrap or sandwich or whatever, salad, whatever you want. Yeah. So that's a great easy way to start growing some of your own food if you don't have any outdoor space or maybe you just want to grow inside. It's a great option. Yeah. Get you a little grow light. Yeah, well, yeah. On They're that everywhere. Note, I was gonna um, mention those little arrow gardens. Now, I yeah. mean, like it's a little space, but you could right. do like herbs in that and save money on. You know what? One of those little clamshell packs of a fresh herb costs. I know. Like, They're not six cheap. Six and seven dollars for not cheap. a handful of rosemary mm-hmm. is ridiculous. Mm-hmm. You can grow a pot of rosemary. Yeah. For almost nothing. Right. (laughs) So, yeah, have a little small container garden for Mm -hmm. herbs in the kitchen. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Get a little sunny window, a little Mm -hmm. sunny corner of the porch. Yeah. Herbs. Herbs is a good place to start if you're afraid to garden. Yeah. Or don't think you don't have the space to garden. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, so really when it comes down to it, like seriously, anybody who wants to homestead, like if you want to do it. And, and you have the desire to do it. There are mm-hmm. so many different ways that you can start. Yeah. Just figure out, like, what's the one skill that yeah. you can learn at a time? Yeah. Right? Right. Start with one thing at a time. Learn that skill. Build on that skill. Mm-hmm. You know, and then just take it from there. Yep. See if you can take it to the next step. And then you go to the next thing. Like, that's how we built our whole entire homestead. It's right. like we started with one little thing. Right. And then once once we got that one little thing going, it was like, okay, what do we want to do next? What can I add? What can I add? What do I want to learn about? Yeah. Yeah. So what, on that note, like, what are you looking to add this year? Oh, gosh. What am I looking to add this year? Because we never stop learning. <laughs> no, we never stop learning. What I really want to focus on in 2024 is more intensively managing my sheep and my cows. Okay, big scale homestead skill. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, it's not a small scale Mm -hmm. thing, but um, our herd has just really grown a lot. It really has. And I think our sheep are well on their way to growing as well. And um, I came to the realization the other day that I was like, wow, I mean, if I really started like – managing that a little bit better, mm-hmm. it, it could be a lot more productive. Mm. So um, I've got to figure out a water situation. Mm-hmm. If I want to intensively graze the, graze the cows a little bit more, yeah, I've got to find a way to get lots of water all the way to the back. I wonder so, if you, you were talking about, um, you know, figuring out the electric yeah fence to do that mm-hmm. like movable electric fence and yeah. um instead of worrying about moving water if you could run a lane up to their existing water like along the main fence you know right right yeah i had thought about that too because we have that central artesian well mm-hmm. in the pasture and so right now all of the pasture space that we have it it all connects to that right so yeah i mean you could essentially just feed off like a hallway almost right you know yeah exactly it's doable it's just big. It's doing it. It's doing it. It's it's figuring out the logistics of it. Of it, so and then, then it's one field at a time, Jenny. Just doing the next step. Right. Right. It's starting small mm-hmm. and thinking big. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I got it. I got it. <laughs> I had this. I had this realization this week. I think I texted you. I, I think I don't remember if I texted you or not about this, but I was like, I was milking cows the other morning and went. Wow. Right. Where have I come from? Right. Like how did it how did all of this happen? How did this happen? Right? Right. And I just because like I just wanted to milk a cow. Right. <laughs> it wasn't that long ago that we were both dreaming of being 
where we're at now. Right. And it's like, wait a second, yeah. how did all that just happen? God. <laughs> I know. And hard work. Right. Yeah. yeah. And starting mm-hmm. small. Starting small, thinking big. Yeah. Um, one big lesson I've learned as we've built the homestead and have come this far, is, and I think you'll agree, is learning when to say no. Yeah. Like, oh, oh, there's a good deal. Oh, oh, oh I want to mm. do it. Oh, I want to, you know, oh, I, we can do it. It's available. Right. I, I can use some savings, like whatever, whatever. Right. If it's not right, <laughs> right, it, you know, if you have to make it work, it's never going to be right. Right. Um, so learning when to say no has, has become big for me. It's hard. I don't want to say no to anything or anybody. Right. I want to be able to do it all. Yeah. One thing I, and I didn't even read the whole book, but it's called Your Best Yes. Mm, yeah, you know, and yeah. I kind of read like a little bit of a blurb of that book, and it really like resonated with me. Like, mm. don't say yes unless it's your best yes, right? Because then you're just going to go into it with a bunch of regret and a bunch of problems and headaches, right, and right. So that has really stuck with me over the years. Like, it's yeah, got to be your best yes. It's that whole like when you say yes to something, you're saying no to something else. It's very true. And we we normally think of that like in the con, in the context of our families. Yeah. Like if I'm going to take on another responsibility, it's going to take away from my children or my right. husband or my, you know, whatever. Right. But on the homestead, if I say yes to another milk cow that I really don't need, I just want it or it's a good deal or whatever. Right. That's saying no <laughs> to garden time, garden time in the morning. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And which true. is essential to be in the morning in June. Right, right, <laughs> right. Because if you're not out there in the morning, you better forget about it. Yeah, and guess what happened this year in June? I didn't garden, and my whole yeah. garden went to crap. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, that best yes is a, is a good, a good. I should read that book. I know. In my it's, spare time, it's probably an amazing book. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you meant you'd read it and you were recommending it. No, no, no. I said I have not read it. Oh, okay. But no, I read like an excerpt from it. Oh, and that was good enough. And that was good enough. I was like, (laughs) all right, I got it. I bet, you know, I have to get back to Audible or like audio I'm not a big reader. I I love to read. I just don't find the time. It's just not the priority, especially now that like we're keeping up with our website better you know, I, right. I don't have the time to sit and read. So audiobooks, yeah. I think I need to revisit. Yeah, for sure. So. Yeah, so I guess really just find something that inspires you and interests you and just mm-hmm. do it. Just learn it. Don't wait. Mm-hmm. You don't need the acreage. Mm-hmm. One skill at a time. You don't need the giant garden. Like just start now. Mm-hmm. And then when you finally do walk into that dream, you will be well prepared and equipped. Yeah. And then you can build and then upon you can that. Build. Yeah. Even if it's that same one skill. If you right. finally decide to make a garden, and you do it and you do it well, then you can expand it instead of adding something else. Like right. we we're saying, you can just expand that garden. Yep. So options. I always say options are good. Options are good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we will talk to you guys next week. So yeah, y'all stay encouraged and um, this homesteading life is for everybody. It is. It's for everyone. Yep. Get out there and do it. Yep. All right, y'all. Bye. Bye.